Okay, we are back. This is Tech Math 2. We're looking at 2.3. More fun with vectors. So parallelograms, 2.3. Um, so parallelograms, opposite angles, like diagonal angles, are always the same. Adjacent angles, or ones you know, right next to each other, always have to add up to 180. Um, opposite sides are always the same. So when they say how long is PQ, that's going to be 10 inches. How long is QV, that's going to be 20 inches. So that, that's pretty easy. Angle P, that's going to be 180 degrees minus 63 degrees. So what are we looking at there? 117 degrees. And then if that guy's 117 degrees, so is V, and Q is going to be 63 degrees. And there we go. Easy peasy. So look at 2.4 on the next page, number 19. It says if angle... O is 120, angle D is what? Well, again, if this is 120, then angle D is 180 minus 120. It's always got to add up to 180 degrees. The whole um, rectangle adds up to 360, but adjacent sides add up to 180. So that's 60 degrees. So angle D is 60 degrees. They said, well, then DR... DR would be 40, and now they want you to go way back again into Tech Math 1. We did the law of cosines, basically use the law of cosines and write out an equation for OR, but don't actually find OR. And so I will do that, but in reality, if we were trying to solve this resultant vector, I would be using like what I showed you before, the, the polar to rectangular, rectangular to polar. That's the easiest way. But um, here, let's, we'll write it out the long way. So remember how that worked. It was OR, that's the resultant vector, squared. That would equal, so remember, you, you use the opposite sides and the included angle. So it's um, 40 squared plus 50 squared uh, minus, and then I think it was 2 times 40 times 50 times the cosine, remember the law of cosines, times the cosine of this angle, the, the included angle. When you have two sides and an angle, you would find the opposite side. So 60 degrees. So let me double check that because I might be a little rusty on that. Let's see, we got... 50 squared plus 40 squared minus 2 times 50 times 40 times cosine 60. Nope, we're good. That's it. They put the 50 and the 40 around the other way, but that's fine. It doesn't matter. They're the sides. All right? So see, if you work that out, that would be OR. And so that would be another way to get there without using polar and rectangular. I still think, personally, it's way easier to use polar to rectangular and rectangular to polar with your calculator. So let's take a look at 2.5, and we're gonna to jump to 25, and that's a pretty easy concept. So hopefully this wasn't bad. I mean, obviously that law of cosines bit, that's not easy. But you know, you've seen parallelograms before, I'm sure. That's not your first exposure to parallelograms and how those play. So 2.5, Five, and let's um, look at number 25. And basically this one probably makes sense to most of you also, whether you're visual or not. I'm not really all that visual of a person, but when you look at this graph, they have, okay, here. We got this angle is 22 degrees right there. And then they have, This angle from here to here is 100 and, oh no, we don't know that angle. We don't know that angle. They want us to find that angle. That's angle one. 
And then from here to there is 138. So doesn't that make sense if this whole thing is 138 and this much of it is 22, that we would just subtract those two? So we just say 138 minus that little piece of it, 22 right there, and that'll be that middle piece. So that's um, 116, 116 degrees for angle one. And I kind of figured that that would make sense to most everybody without really racking your brain. Obviously, if maybe you're a little more visual of a person, it might make a little more sense. This next one, 29, I struggle with these a little bit. Not this one. This one's pretty easy. They want to know what quadrant does the resultant vector land in. And here, I'll sketch these in. So this one's pretty easy. It's pretty obviously in the first quadrant. But this is where I have a hard time. My more visual students don't even really have to draw it. They just know. And so... what quadrant what quadrant and the last one here what quadrant okay so the resultant vector they want to know where does it land basically and so the resultant vector on these you would find them by drawing a parallelogram so look you you copy that as best you can up there you copy that off of the end of that and that is the resultant vector right there. So this is clearly in quadrant one. That one really wasn't up for grabs. These are kind of up for grabs, so you have to kind of copy that as best you can, kind of copy that off the end of the arrow as best you can, and that's the resultant vector. So see, because this one goes harder this way, it's gonna pull it more that way than that one is. And so that's in quadrant two. And then this one. That's going to end up in quadrant four. All right. They have much better pictures drawn than I can draw on the board. But um, on page 81, on the top of page 81. Okay. Okay, let's... Um, Let's work the problem. Uh, let's look at 32. So we'll look at 32. And I'll show you a way that you can organize your thought process. So number 32, you want to change it from polar to rectangular, figure out the resultant vector and the angle that it goes off. So we're looking at number 32 on page 82. We're talking about vectors. And so here they have a coordinate plane system. And our first vector that's going off at 12.0 and zero degrees. Um, this one is going off at eight, and I believe they give us a degree measure for it, 130 degrees. Okay, and they already have the resultant vector drawn in there for us. I'll, I'll draw that in blue. So if these two forces hit this at the same time, this point right here at that center, the origin, where is it gonna land? Where is the chair gonna roll to? Well, it's going to end up right there. These are kind of working against each other because, look, this 12 is going this, but because this is more than 90, it's pulling it in the opposite direction. Think about easy vectors. If it was going 12 in that way and 5 in this way, you'd know the resultant vector would just be 7 because they're just exactly opposing forces. If it was going positive x and negative x, 
it would just they just wipe each other out. So it'd be super easy to find the result in vector there. Um, here, it's a little harder. So now look, we know this already. This one we can find with no trouble at all. That's 12 comma zero. And so what you can do is you can kind of map this out. So vector one, vector two here, let's, um, they have them named O, A, O, B, and O, R. So there's vector O, A. I want the X and I want the Y. And now call that the horizontal and vertical component. So they'll give it a fancy name. They'll call it the horizontal component and the vertical component. But at the end of the day, it's the X and Y. It's the, the rectangular coordinates. And that one we just get from the fact that it's on the x-axis, so it's 12 comma 0. So we have those. We can put those in. Now, this one is a tougher cell, the, the OB. I have to use my calculator and transform it from, remember, we're coming from polar to rectangular. So I'm going to go polar to rectangular x, and I'm going to put in 8 comma 130, and figure out what that is, and then I'm going to go polar to rectangular y, and put in 8 comma 130, and figure out what that is. And that's going to give me my x and y here. Okay, so let's re recall on the calculator here, I'll just show you one of them. So we're gonna go second angle. We're gonna go down until you see polar to P to R, X, hit enter. And now we put in eight comma 130 and then hit enter. You should get negative 5.14. Now that makes sense because look, it's the x should be negative. It's in the second quadrant. So I'll put it here, negative 5.14, but I'm also going to write it here. And so this is going to be the resultant vector down here. All right. So now let's do the same thing. Second angle and we'll go down. You got to click one more down to number eight polar to rectangular y, and then 8 comma 130. And that gives me 6.13. And now this is what I like about this, that it's, it's this simple, the operation that we use. This is a pretty complicated physics problem, right? It isn't easy. The simple part is actually how you find the resultant vector. How do I find this? Well, x, it's pushing x, it's pushing it this way, 12, and it's pulling it that way, 5.14. So you just add those two together. And remember, a positive and a negative, so 12 um, minus, essentially, either plus negative 5.14, or just plain old minus 5.14, is 6.86. And 0 plus 6.13 is 6.13. And that is my resultant vector. I added up the y values. I added up the x values. Okie dokes. Now, there's one other thing, though. They don't want it in rectangular form. They don't want it like this. They want to know what's this length and what's this angle. So now we're going to go back into our calculator. We're going to go from rectangular to polar resultant. And we'll put in the 6.86 comma 6.13. And let's figure that out. So second apps, that's the angle. Rectangular to polar R. And 6.86 comma 6.13. 
that's 9.199, so we'll call it 9.2. And rectangular to polar theta, let's find the angle, 6.86. 6.13 and we're looking at 41.78 41.8 degrees or probably 42 degrees they usually want the degrees rounded to the whole degree so let's see what they have they have 9.2 units check and 42 degrees, check. So are there different ways of doing this? Absolutely. You could have put the eight over on this side, you could have taken the 130 minus 180 and put 50 there, and you could have used the law of cosines and found the resultant vector, got to the, that uh, 9.2 that way. Um, as for the angle, you could drop this down after you find the, um, y value and the x value so we could use this and this drop that down and and go ahead and find the angle or i guess law of signs probably is what they would have used for that because you have the eight and you have that and you have you know this is 50 degrees so you could use the law of signs and cross multiply and solve personally i think believe it or not I think this is easier. It, there's there's a lot less algebra involved in this because your calculator is doing all the algebra. It is doing the arc tangent. It is doing, this is essentially just doing the arc tangent. That's how it's getting 42 degrees. And this is essentially doing um, Pythagorean's theorem with a 90 degree angle drop. And so you're, you're getting there without, um, without doing the algebra, but it is a tedious problem. There are a lot of steps to it. And um, I, I really want you to get your head around what you're doing. You're transforming it from polar to rectangular. You're finding those X's and Y's, you're adding them together, and then you're transforming it back into polar form. That's what's happening every time you solve one of these vector component problems. So uh, the components of vectors, that's super easy. Let's take a look at number 40 and 2.6. That is, um, they have it already graphed. So it's going this way and this way. And they want the resultant vector, but they only want the resultant vector in um, terms of a rectangular coordinate. So that's really easy because the first vector they gave you was 7.5 and the other one was negative 5.3. So literally that's the X and that's the Y. So it's just 7.5 comma negative 5.3. So super easy compared to what we just did. They gave you this vector and then combined it with this vector and just wanted to know the resultant vector in rectangular form. So they didn't want the resultant vector length and they didn't want the angle. They just wanted the X and the Y. And they gave you the X and the Y, essentially. All right, let's look at two seven also. Pretty easy compared to what we did already. So, um, let's look at 44. they doing here they gave us this is O D and O M okay and they told us this is 37 degrees and they told us this is 43.8 units. And now they want us to find OD, and they want us to find 
D, M. Oh, so basically they just want us to find the X and the Y. So, okay, look, when they say find O, D, that's like find X or the horizontal component. When they say find D, M, that's essentially find Y or the vertical component. And so we're gonna use our calculator for this one. This is gonna be, um, oh, now look, because it's in the fourth quadrant, let's put a negative 37 on it. It's negative 37 degrees, right? Because it's in the fourth quadrant. And so it's going this way instead of going around the positive way. So we'll call that angle negative 37 and that'll, that'll work in for our, our Y value. All right, so here we go. Let's uh, do polar from polar to rectangular x of, of uh, 43.8 comma negative 37 and polar to rectangular y 43.8 comma negative 37 degrees. So we'll pop both of those into our calculator and see what we get. So second apps, polar to rectangular x, 43.8 comma negative 37. Enter. Oopsie. Oh, I had a four in front of it. Sorry. Second apps, polar to rectangular x, 43.8 comma negative 37. That's 34.98, we'll call it 35.0. So the x on this is 35. From here to there, it's, it's shooting at 35. And now from here to there, that's just the y component. We're gonna pop that into our calculator, second, Apps, go down to number eight, hit enter, and then 43.8 comma negative 37. And now it tells us negative 26.35, we'll call it 0.36. It's uh, 359. So, oh, they just wanted to do the four. Okay, so they have uh, 35 and they have negative 26.4 which is right from there to there, it's going down. But this point in space would be 35 comma negative 26.4. Okay. And even if you forgot the negative on the 37, you just have to know, well, it's in the fourth quadrant, so Y has to be negative. You just tack the negative on. So if you did this, you just have to add a negative to your answer because you know what quadrants it's in. If you remember the negative on the 37, it'll, it'll kick out 26.4 negative. All right, so that's two seven. Let's see what we are for time here. Up, oh. and then the the next video will be two eight two nine and two ten.